next one is the annual ryegrass. Uh, annual ryegrass, um, again, is, is one that we don't typically think of as being planted after the middle of October. Uh, but again, this is overwintered here quite well. This is a diploid type, which means it's the more winter hardy. Uh, so like uh, uh, Winterhawk or KB Royal are examples of diploid type ryegrasses that have the best cold tolerance. Uh, a lot of times we don't recommend this to be planted after the 1st of October up here in Nebraska, just simply because ryegrass needs to get better establishment before it goes into the winter dormancy in order to survive. So whereas cereal rye could be planted in December, annual ryegrass has to kind of get some, some roots down and be established in order to make it through. So this did very well. It uh, really came on fast in the spring once it started warming up. As you can see, annual ryegrass is a much finer stemmed plant than what cereal rye is. It does not get nearly as tall. Now this has already gone to head, so we would have wanted to have terminated this far, far earlier. Uh, it's much easier to plant into because there's significantly less biomass. The thing that makes this such a great cover crop is even though this is only maybe 30% the height of that cereal rye, the root system is probably equally as deep as that five yeah. foot tall rye. It, it, it has, uh, it may not get as deep as rye, uh, but the, the density, especially in the surface layers, uh, this tends to take wetter soils and heavier clay than the cereals. Uh, much more tolerant of, of wet, heavy clay. Um, some other advantages of the ryegrass, um, it will regrow after grazing very, very well. Ryegrass is used as a long grass because it recovers from frequent close mowing over and over and over again. It maintains, it doesn't green up as early as the cereals, but it maintains quality later. It, it's a, a very, very nutritious plant. I personally plant a mixture of rye and annual ryegrass to get the best of both worlds. One drawback of ryegrass, it is harder to terminate than rye. Uh, either with herbicide, it it's, seems to be much more resistant to Roundup than what rye is or any of the other winter cereals. And a lot of that, if you look at this leaf surface, it's, you can tell it's very shiny, very waxy. Um, that tends to bead herbicide solutions off the leaf. Um, it, it's, it's got a waxy cuticle and, and spray solutions tend to slide off. So the, your choice of adjuvant, uh, you, if you're using a fully loaded glyphosate, it's not fully loaded enough for ryegrass. And, and, and weather conditions are absolutely critical for killing ryegrass. So there's a lot of good information on the internet about how to kill annual ryegrass but you have to really, really pay attention to the weather and have the right conditions or you're just wasting your money. Yeah, over 50 degrees, um, add additional surfactant, ammonium sulfate is really critical, and uh, do not tank mix with atrazine or Sharpen. Yeah. The, that's a couple big no-no's. Don't spray on a cloudy day, don't spray late in the day. Yeah. And part of it is that waxy cuticle, but it's also a very, very deep and extensive root system, and you don't have near as much plant area to translocate that chemical down to kill that root system. So, yeah. it, it's a great cover crop. Uh, I, I, you know, if we can get it to overwinter like this every year, uh, I'd sure recommend a lot more of it up here. But definitely, as you go south or as you move east into wetter areas, there's a lot of this that's flown in prior to harvest on, yeah. on both sides. Seeding fields. rate is much, much lower. I mean, you're looking at 20, 25 pounds for a pure stand rate versus, you know, 60, 80, 90 on some of the cereals. So for aerial seeding where it's nice to get as many acres as you can out of one tank, um, there's a lot of ryegrass used for aerial seeding. Smaller seed germinates from the surface better than most of your cereals.